This video will show you how to edit green screen recordings to remove the green screen background from the recording and substitute another background photo or video. This is the second video of a two video series, how to make green screen videos. The first video showed how to set up the green screen studio that I'm using now and how to set up the lights and how to make the recordings. Many video editors can process green screen videos. Some are free, some have free trial versions, but I'll be using CyberLink PowerDirector version 18 because I've been using it for years since before I started producing green screen videos. We'll show how to mask the original recording to remove everything except your actions in front of the green screen, then how to remove the green screen and replace it with either a background photo or video. We'll also show you how to change the size or position of your image on the new background. And lastly, we'll show you how to simply add a text box anywhere on your video. First, Open PowerDirector and import the files you're going to be working with. The easiest way to do that is to drag the files onto the PowerDirector icon. What we're going to work with now are, we're going to start by replacing the sound in our DSLR video recording with a recording made on the laptop using the SM35 microphone. That's the way I start processing all my DSLR videos because the sound is terrible if the camera's very far from you. So we're gonna put those files in. We're also gonna put a couple of trial photo backgrounds, one video background, and we're gonna put in a text, a picture of a text box that we're gonna show you how to insert that on the video also. So we'll just select all those files and put them all in. You could put it one at a time in after you open it, but it's simpler just to start with all the ones you want. To add more files later, just drag them into the window of the open PowerDirector. PowerDirector has opened and it has imported all our files. The first step is to replace the audio. And the way to do that, drag the DSLR recording down onto the timeline and drag the audio recording from the that's been moved over from the laptop using voice recorder drag it down another track on the timeline power director has a audio sync capability if you select two files that both have audio in them you can select sync by audio power director will analyze the two files and then line them up so that their audio parts match then you can split off the parts that don't have the audio. And the simplest way to do that is position at the beginning, split. If you want more information on how to use PowerDirector, see playlist basic editing with PowerDirector 18. And the link to that video, as all the links, will be on the web page. That's in the video description. It's https colon slash slash www.tomstechnotes, T-O-M-S-T-E-C-H-N-O-T-E-S dot com slash green screen. That's the script for this video and the first video in the playlist, and it will have embedded URLs in it that are clickable for all the videos or equipment referenced in the video. We've split the, the two files at the same point. Now we can get rid of those two parts. Don't fill the gap, leave the gap, otherwise it'll shift them with respect to each other and we have to keep them synchronized. Now we can drag them both to the left end. The reason you do that is the next step to replace the audio is select just this audio and drag it up, keeping it to the left so it doesn't shift. Release, select overwrite. Now we've replaced the original DSLR audio with the audio from the laptop. 
it'll sound much better. There's a little piece on the end we can get rid of. We'll have to split this one too though, so what we do is we select the little piece on the end, split, and get rid of the end. Now, we're selected too much, that's because when you select this one, it's linked to that. We have to unlink them. Now we can select it separately and this one and get rid of them. This is the part where I'm getting everything organized and that's not really the part we're interested in. We'll locate the point in the video where I'm sitting down and getting ready to start following the script of the video. I'm just going to show you how we would do in one little segment of the video. I'm not using the teleprompter right now, so I look at my notes, then I put them down, and then I speak facing the camera. And we'll just show you how to process that single little part. And I'll have to expand the display. So we go back to the beginning. We need to mask out everything except the green screen and, of course, me in front of it. So to do that, you select the video portion and you open the mask designer. Please note in the newer versions of PowerDirector, the PIP designer and the mask designer have been moved into the tools tab. We'll select rectangle. By default, it's going to keep the same shape, which means we won't be able to uh, do a skinny rectangle selection around me, I'd have to select something the same shape as this. I don't want to do that. So we, go, we have to go down, begin by unchecking the box that says maintain mask aspect ratio. Uncheck it. Now we can drag the, the uh, cropping uh, dots independently of each other. And so what we'll do is hover over it till you see the double-headed arrow, drag it over to where it's only on the green screen. There. Same way on this side. And that's pretty much it. If you knew you wanted a particular part of yourself to only to show, you would go ahead and crop it all the way down. Select a little bit less. It makes it easier to get rid of the green especially if the lighting is not perfectly uniform. And I'll go ahead and bring this down. You wouldn't want to do that if you wanted to, for instance, point to something with your arm out. You'd want to leave more of the green on there. But we'll just do this for the example. Now, that's, that's fine. We can go ahead and save that. We need to move the video down to the second track because the background photo or video has to be on the track above the video track. We'll move the background video or photo to the track above the video track. So let's just try one of our background pictures. Let's put it over the part that I've already done the masking. I haven't masked the rest, so you have to process each piece separately unless, you, unless it's uniform enough where you can process them all at once before you split the video. So don't split the video too early in the processing because anything you process here where you're masking will only apply to this selected section. But again, for the example, I'm just working on one tiny little part. So we could go ahead and cut our background so it'll only show during this selected section. Now we're just going to have this with this background. Make sure everything is selected. And when you select the video, you will see both the masked video that you did and you'll see the background video or photo. In this case, it's a photo. So that's what's going to show. Now we need to get rid of the green. Make sure you've selected the video. Select the PIP designer. The green screen elimination logic is called chroma key. So scroll down till you see chroma key. Select it. Now the next step is you have to select the eyedropper. It's a little confusing because the eyedropper doesn't do anything when you select it. Once you move it over here, you see the eyedropper. So you, you click it once to select it, even though that doesn't seem to do anything. Then when you move over, you'll see the eyedropper. And now move that into the green. 
And if you have a variation in lighting at all, it's best to click on the brightest area. And pretty much got rid of all the green. There's a little bit here where there was apparently some shading. Now there's an adjustment for that as long as it's not too far off. And that's this color range. Very slowly increase the color range till this green goes away. If you notice your hair fluttering, increasing the color setting will sometimes eliminate it. I frequently set the color to the maximum of 60. If you notice moving patterns on your body, try adjusting the color and the denoise until you minimize or eliminate them. And let's try it out. I play this whole short little clip to see what happens. And you do want to make sure that nothing funny happens in the segment you're working on, and it pretty much looks like it's perfect. That'll happen frequently if you have a real green screen and you've been fairly careful illuminating it. If you have a fake green screen like a, a beige wall or something, you'll have a lot of trouble getting the wall to go away. And also, then you'll get little speckles, which you have to to increase the denoise setting to get rid of. Fortunately, all we had to do was make a slight increase of the color range, and it looks pretty perfect right now. So that's all you basically do to process the, the uh, green screen to get rid of the green and superimpose your image on your background. Now go ahead, you can go ahead and, and save the result and go ahead and check it again after you do. Play it again on, on this, the actual changed video. Remember, this is the background. This is the video where we remove the green. So let's see what happens. And as you saw, it got past where we had processed it, and, and we have that. I'm not going to bother to record the audio, so the audio is there. You can see, you could see if you could hear it, that it is still synchronized to my lips, which is very important when you're facing the camera. That's everything you need to do to go through and add your background, get rid of the background, superimpose you on that new background, and make sure that there's nothing funny. There's no green parts in here and there's no little black speckles or, or uh, sometimes you'll get a, like a pixelation thing that, that flickers for you if, if things aren't exactly right, like the green's not exactly right or the uh, lighting is not exactly right. If you notice a green edge on your image, that's caused by light reflected on you from the green screen. To remove that, use a light behind you and direct it toward your back. One last adjustment we need to make. The background image wasn't a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, so it doesn't fill the preview window. Select the background image, then drag the dots on the sides or the top as necessary to stretch the picture to fill the window. The next thing I'll show you how to do is if you wanted to put like a text box at the bottom, it's very easy to do with PowerDirector. We need to shorten the top part so we get more of the bottom part on because we need to put the text box below. Uh, what PowerDirector does is it shows this first, then it puts this on top of it, then puts whatever here on top of that. So all that's here now is my figure. That's all it gets from there because we took everything else off. And it has this picture. Now we're going to put a little text box down here. It's a photograph of a text box. And the way we made that is we typed a line of text with a word processor, then we snipped it with a snipping tool into a little box. If you click on it, you can move it around and change its size. So we can drag it down. Also, we can make this smaller. Mask yourself off if you wanted, or you could just raise yourself up. It looks like there's enough room here so that my legs will be behind this text if I raise it slightly. So let's go ahead and select the video. PIP designer, remember. Now let's go ahead and just raise my image up slightly. Click once to start the 
process. Go ahead and drag it up. Don't worry about the fact I'm in front now. It'll, it'll all get sorted out when we're done. And you can say, okay. Let's go back to the PIP designer so I can show you how to change the size and position of the image. Now, you move by clicking in the middle and seeing the uh, cross appear, but you change the size by dragging the dots. You can also change the size by dragging the height or width sliders in the left column. Remember, you want to keep this checked. Maintain aspect ratio. Now, if you drag it down or this side, it'll start changing the size. So click once to start. Drag this down, and it, in, it de decreases the size. And now, to move it up, you can just click in the middle and drag it up. And, of course, if you wanted it over here, you can do that. If you wanted yourself peeking up, the text is going to be in front when you go back to the uh, saved result. Go and save that. So you can have another track of this down here. Pip that, and then you can have two of you on the picture and moving, moving you around independently. You just copy this down here and use the Pip Designer on this one to move it around wherever you want. So, but now what I can do is move this over and see there's the original one that I, that I copied. And I could have another one meant one of me over here, for instance. You don't have to use the Pip Designer to move or change the size of the image. You can just select a clip then resize it by dragging the dots around the edges or click in the middle and drag to move it. So that's pretty much everything you need. I will go ahead and restore it to refresh your memory. I'll, take, I'll get rid of this one and I'll go ahead and put the text back down there. So everything will look the way it did. And then put this, chop it here. We, we actually, when you select it, you don't need the PIP designer, but you, you need to wait a couple of seconds for it to process it and show up. Then you can move it around. You can now produce the final video, and when it gets to this part of this whole video, this is what you'll see. And remember, we haven't really finished the rest of it. I just showed you how to do one little section. If you enjoyed this Tom's Tech Notes video, Please like it and please leave a comment. To watch my other videos or to read many computer help articles, please visit my YouTube channel or my website. You can also click links in the video description. When thumbnails appear, click the thumbnail at upper left to watch other videos related to this one. Click at lower left to watch a video specially recommended for you. Click my photo to visit the Tom's Tech Notes channel. To subscribe, please click the red button. If you don't see the red button, hover over my photo to show it.